Hello everybody and welcome to my Missile Commander 3D game review on the Tari Jaguar. Now this is kind of one of the old games on the Tari Jaguar because this was supposed to be one of the games for the 3D helmet that never came out. And here on the bottom of the package, the Virtual Reality Helmet logo. Anyway, let's play Missile Commander 3D on the Tari Jaguar. Now this is one of the Tari Jaguar games that did use the system. I didn't use it quite well, just to say the system's limitations. There we go, the little VR helmet logo, and there's a great big one. Quite a good use of sprites there for the Tari Jagger to say it wasn't really fantastic on 3D. And here we are, here's the logo. What I like about it is they're really trying to push the system to the limit on this game. But they also, they also put the classical game on. They didn't just whack 3D and just put a 3D game on it. They did just spend a bit of time making this one. That's actually a lot to say about Atari Jaguar game, as a lot of them were rushed. And here's the option, the original, the 3D one, and the virtual one. Let's play the original one first, as we can see what this game was based on. The original 2D version that came out in the 1980s. Here we go. Now, this is what I like about this remake. They didn't just bung on just the original one with the original sound. They actually improved it a bit. And that's a lot to say for Jaguar game, I tell you now. Now, the main objective of this game is, is to stop the missile coming down on the city and blowing up the little cities. As you can see underneath. Also, I like about this, you could zoom up and stretch it. You can also change it into other things like Atari Lynx Pad or an arcade cabinet. Now, let's see. Now, the Atari Jaguar is known for millions of buttons on the pad, so let's see what I can do with this. Here we go. I think I can, I'm on a, an arcade cabinet here. If I'm right, I can zoom out on this. Let's try to zoom out. See, yeah. Bear with me. Let's see, I can zoom this out. Yay, I can zoom it out. I can zoom out the arcade cabinet right there. For a split second back there, you could actually see a Tarry Lynx pad. But here's the actual arcade cabinet. Remade into 3D for the Tarry Jaguar. Now that's pay attention to detail. Now let's have a look at the actual 3D version of this game. Now on the uh, 3D version, it's a same objectives. You've got to stop the missile landing in the city. Now this is a bit harder compared to the 2D version because this is for 3D obviously. But it makes it a lot harder because the camera angles is not quite right and the missile sneak past you and hit one of the cities. Now for the Tari Jaguar, this is actually not too bad for graphics. It looks like it does actually use some sort of um, texture mapping, and not a lot of Tari Jaguar games did use texture mapping. I know it had a capability of doing it, but it wasn't really used too much in their games. I have not seen much texture mapping in their games, but this is good good use of it. Now I do like that sun effect that glazes onto the camera. It does look really good. Although I think they could have done a bit better with the music. The music seems a little bit repetitive since they've got I think when you play games like Tempest 2000, that's what kind of music the Tarot Jaguar was capable of. 
you know they could have done a bit better with the music. Now you've got to use your ammo right, because if you use too much of it, you will run out of missiles and you cannot protect your cities for the little missiles come down like, like this for example. I completely run out of missiles now and I have one little city left to defend. And then on your final stage you get little rocks coming down onto your city. And you've got to defend your city against these rocks that are falling down from the sky, these asteroids. Ah, watch it, watch it! Oof! So I completely run out of ammo now. Oh! Hope my little city can survive. No! I think I've done it. I think I've completed this 3D stage now. Come on. Hey, I've done it. Well, I'm not exactly brilliant at this game, but I, at least I got through and survived with one city remaining. Well, one city remaining better than none. And I'm actually on the scoreboard, hooray! And now we're on the final one now. Let's play on easy, because if I play on hard, I don't think I'll be able to do this. Now this is a strange one, I don't know if this was ever in the 80s version. You're actually underneath an ocean with cities that are covered in glass. And yeah, as you can guess it, it's exactly the same thing, missiles coming down and landing on your city. But I do like the effects on this as the underneath water, the bubble effect. And the good and a good use of 3D as well, just like the other level, it does use good 3D. It does have a tiny bit of slowdown, but not too bad. Not it doesn't affect the gameplay too badly. Now, the main difference between this and the other 3D level is that you actually get bosses on this, like on this one you get this spaceship you have to shoot at and it's just like a boss, you've got to constantly shoot at it and it attacks your city and you're going to have to shoot and kill it so now I think it's fired something up in the air I think Come oh, on, get it, get it, get it. I think I've done it. Come on. No, I haven't. I'll take that, you sucker. Yeah. Done it. I've done it. Destroyed that ship. Woohoo. Now, the good thing about this is uh, you don't just have one enemy, you have multiple enemies. Like, like this big fish. Yes, you get a big, reasonably textured map of big fish that you had to fight. Now, I don't think this is a massive great threat. I don't think it actually attacks the city. I think it just swims around you by the looks of things. Here we go. It's getting angry now. It's getting all red. Come on. I'm going to have to shoot this fish. Kill the fish in the environment. And yes, that's it. That's all you have to do on the fish boss. Not very much, isn't it? But wait, you now have to fight this massive ship that fires bombs down on your city as your next boss at the end of the next level. Now, as the levels are pretty repetitive and each level has missiles 
flying down on the city. I just skip to the main um, enemy parts because they're the main difference on the levels. Now look at this. I've got an after now. I have to. Oh no, it's fine down the city. Now, if all the cities are destroyed, that's it. It's game over. So I got to destroy this thing really, really quickly before it destroys my one last remaining city. I think I got down there. Hooray! It looks like. I have won and defeated the great big ship and my last city has still remained. There's still hope. And it looks like I win the war. It looks like I have a 40% accuracy. Just to say that's out of 100. That's pretty poor, isn't it? But anyway, I've done it on the easy level. I have to put it on the higher level. Ha! <laughs> no chance. I don't think I could get past the first level put on any higher level. Anyway, that's the end of my review, and I'll see everybody next time. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. I also do a, a podcast on the Warren HMPS website, and they are going to have a very, very special guest next week, and they are going to interview... The Oliver Twins on episode 12 of the 1HMPS podcast that is going to be out Monday the 11th of July. Now they are famous for making games like Treasure Island Dizzy, Fantasy World Dizzy and they also made a really good game called Quit Snacks. Now don't miss this opportunity. They will be on Monday the 11th of July on the Wally on the 1HMPS website.